Hello there. Welcome to the Nerdery. 2020 was a very robust year for Black Series action figures. After much meditation and reflection on this year's plethora of fantastic releases, may I humbly present to you the Nerdery's Top 10 Black Series Action Figures of 2020. This top 10 list will prioritize the figure's ability to captivate your attention in a display and the joy it brought out of box. Please let me know in the comments below your top Black Series figures of 2020. Like every nerd with a YouTube channel top 10 list, I have to get in my five honorable mentions. These go to Boba Fett from Empire Strikes Back, Kamino Clone Trooper, Count Dooku and his awesome red lightsaber effect, Han Solo, and Princess Leia Bespin. Number 10, Obi-Wan Kenobi from Attack of the Clones. My favorite Star Wars character was honorably represented with accurate face sculpt and a worthy space mullet. I felt he had superior articulation to other Jedi figures, but still leaves room for improvement. Hopefully they get that with the Revenge of the Sith wave. And most importantly, I was able to recreate this awesome scene from Attack of the Clones with Jango Fett. Number 9, the Incinerator Trooper. Dude, the flame is the best effect yet for Black Series. It makes the figure stand out in the display and allows me to create an action scene with Beskar Mando. There were so many good troopers this year, I picked the Incinerator Trooper to represent them on the top 10 list. I really love the distinctive red paint job on the helmet as well as the armor. Really makes the helmet stand out around the mouth grill and then it looks great on the body as well. And I am a sucker for a nice pauldron, and that's a nice deep redded pauldron there. And then you cap it all off with his incinerator backpack. And it just looks so cool. It's a really complete figure with the flame accessory. That effect arguably makes it one of the most distinctive and standout figures in my Mandalorian display. Number 8, Ahsoka from the Clone Wars. The Siege of Mandalore is arguably the best storytelling in the Disney Star Wars era. This figure allows me to tell the story from the Siege of Mandalore where she dueled Maul in the display and I can use the other Mando Clone Wars figures to enhance it. I love the navy and silver Mandalore style outfit for Ahsoka. Definitely fits as she is on the path of the Grey Jedi. Love the direction they went with her cartoon accurate face sculpt. They did change her Leku around a little, but I think the colors they picked are spot on to this episode. One of my favorite parts of this figure are the accurate lightsaber hilts and the bold lightsaber blades. A lot of times the blades are thin and they're almost wobbly or look bent. The color on these is bold. The lightsaber itself is bold. It, it's thicker and it really looks like it's emanating from the blade. Number 7, Darth Vader. Hasbro absolutely nailed this upgraded Vader. There is so much going on with his armor, but it is all complimentary. I love the combo of the two-tone upper chest armor. The black bodysuit, the tech, and then it's complemented with the soft good Sith robes and cape. Check out how the Sith robe goes through his back, comes out through the underneath of the belt, and most importantly hangs in between his chest tech. Love the cinema accuracy for Empire Strikes Back to this figure. And again, take a look at the tech there. It very much enhances all the black going on with this figure. One other thing to note is this Vader has vastly improved articulation. Greater than 90 degrees at the elbow, double pin at the knee. A big reason why this Vader made the top 10 is because of how awesome he looks fighting Bespin Luke in my display standing next to Han and Carbonite. And speaking of Carbonite, just want to give props to the Carbonized Vader Empire Strikes Back figure. I'm not a huge Carbonized guy, but I love the execution and the grayish blue and silver on this figure. I think it, so I put this Carbonized Vader next to my Rebels Ahsoka in the display, and it kind of looks like they're fighting in the world between worlds. Number six, Mando and Beskar. Like most of you, I have really enjoyed Season 2 of Mando. Finally tracking down a Beskar Din Djarin filled me with joy. I was so happy to finally put him in the display. The Beskar is beautifully reflective under the LED lights in the display. I currently have him posed in flight versus the Incinerator Trooper. just love the look of the armor, the sheen they put on it. Even though the cape is rubber, I love how it flows off the side of his shoulder there. But this figure really makes the top 10 list because of how cool he looks in the display and how much joy it filled me with. This is the second figure on the top 10 list from The Mandalorian. Will there be any more? Stay tuned to find out. Gaming greats Jango Fett. I instantly loved this simple man who was trying to make his way in the universe as soon as I pulled him out of box. For me, he is the best looking Mandalorian armored figure I have in my collection. 
I love the different colors and details on his jetpack, as well as the fact that it has slots where I could put effects in. So these are effects from my Iron Man. The brown belt with the purple pants and the silver Mandalorian armor absolutely pops in the display, as do his distinctive wrist gauntlets and blasters. I love that the helmet is removable and it has a very faithful face sculpt to Tamura Morrison. Really appreciate when a figure gives me multiple options for a display because, because to me a display is like a Zen garden which should constantly be changing and updating over time. But most importantly, I get to recreate this battle scene. Number four, the armorer. Ever since seeing the armor decimate a squad of stormtroopers in season one, I've wanted to recreate that in my display. First thing you notice about her is this awesome, distinct gold helmet with horns. She's probably a descendant of a Maul loyalist, which I think is really cool. Her Mandalorian armor is very different from typical Mandalorians that we've seen. I love the leather on it in contrast with the rose gold armor. Really cool tech on the belt. And, and then her blacksmith skirt has a really cool dark and light brown wash on it. And it all works very synergistically with her like bluish gray suit underneath. The deluxe version of this figure comes with accessories galore. And I love this deluxe packaging too. So I really appreciate that you could pose the armor beating up stormtroopers, or you could use these accessories to make her forge Din Djarin's armor. And it's so aesthetically pleasing, easily a top five figure 2020. Number three the Hoth Rebel Soldier. This figure features a first of its kind face swap technology. You can make 16 different combinations for this trooper between the two face sculpts, scarf, and glasses. I chose to have him pose in the display with the goggles on, scarf down, and as a bearded gentleman myself, I do appreciate having a figure with a beard in my display. I love the stark white uniform he's wearing, the grenades on the chest, silver ranking insignia. Dude, in addition to this sweet rifle, also comes with this blaster and holder. Check out the detail on the arm with the pocket and ranking, and then you get around to the backpack on the back, man. It just, it just keeps getting better everywhere you look at this figure. Dude, this is definitely a next level Black Series figure, and I hope they keep expanding on this idea because versatility for a display is important, and I like that I can change him up over time. Number two is a tie between Hondo Onaka and Cad Bane. Yeah, dude, it's definitely a cheat having them tied for second, but they are my second favorite figures of 2020. I couldn't separate them no matter how hard I tried. Both have cartoon accurate face sculpts and body sculpts. Hondo looks so great between his weathered face, his goggles, his horns coming off his chin, and the MVP might be the space turtle helmet and dreadlocks in the back. I <laughs> love Cad Bane's menacing stare, red eyes, and the hat is removable, which is awesome because you can pose it like down, you can pose it tilted, Really appreciate how you can remove his hat and then tilt it in multiple different directions based on how you're posing him. Cad Bane has excellent rotation at the head with two different 360 degree joints. Gives you some really cool head tilt to go with that menacing stare. The body sculpt and paint apps are just on point for this figure. Love his brown leather duster in combination with a bandolier. Has a satchel on the side as well as a holster. <laughs> Not to be outdone, Hondo has a pretty sweet duster himself. Dude, I love the leather grain on like that dark plum color. And then the top is ribbed for his pleasure. Looks great to the contrast of the bone white on his shirt and gauntlets. And the Nerdery's number one Black Series figure of 2020 is Luke Jedi Knight from Endor. With honorable mentions to all the 2020 Lukes, Snowspeeder, Bespin, and the Dagobah 2-pack Luke. Luke Jedi Knight was the last Luke Skywalker released in 2020, proving once again you can never have too many Lukes. So why is this Luke the only one to represent on the top 10 list and my number one figure of 2020? It's the green lightsaber. There just is no competing with a Luke Skywalker with a green lightsaber. On top of that, this is truly an outstanding action figure. It comes with a very, very well done photo reel face of Mark Hamill. Plus the helmet is removable, giving you more posing options for your display. Love the details on the lightsaber and especially how it looks with his black glove on the right hand. Really appreciate the soft goods poncho. Looks really cool with his Black Jedi Knight outfit. Just like the helmet, you can remove the poncho and all of a sudden you have a totally new figure. It's Jedi Knight Luke in his all black outfit that he fought Vader with on the Death Star 2. Yeah, I know I've said this multiple times, but I really appreciate when a figure can be posed in multiple different ways in your display, because to me it is a Zen garden. And over time, I just want to recreate different scenes from movies, different shots. And I really appreciate being able to move these figures around and pose them differently. Dude, and ultimately, man, this Luke is number one just because he brought me the most joy out of the box, and that's what this is all about. 
Thank you so much for tuning into the nerdery and watching this video. Let me know in the comments below who your top 10 figures of 2020 are. I always appreciate the comments and interaction from you guys. The community is really the best part of doing these videos. 2020 was an outstanding year for Black Series, but sometimes it made me feel like Audrey Griswold because of the sheer volume of must-have figures. We all went through what I think is a really tough and stressful year, but collecting was a beacon of light for me. Connecting with a genuinely fantastic community of collectors and getting to share the joy these figures brought really helped me get through a lot of stress and turmoil this year, and I really appreciate all of you and being a part of this community now. Coming up next will be the Nerdery's Top 10 Marvel Legend figures of 2020. Please like, subscribe, and ring the bell to join the noble quest of building this action figure collection. See you real soon.